Hello, I'm John McAllister with the John McAllister Report. Today, my guest is Tavion St. Clair, quarterback in the 2025 class from Bell Fountain High School. And as most people know who follow recruiting, Tavian St. Clair has committed to Ohio State. He's a 6'3", maybe 6'4", 215-pound quarterback. He can run well enough. He's got a cannon. He's smart. He makes good decisions and all those things. But he's even a better person. I've really enjoyed getting to know him. He's kind of quiet. He's coming a little bit now. But he, in our interview tonight, he did a heck of a job. Talked about a lot of different things. So I'm excited for you to watch Tavion St. Clair. The only thing I would tell you is he did the interview in his car and with his phone, and toward the very end of the interview, it starts getting dark. But you can still see him. So you please sit back and enjoy my video podcast with Tavian St. Clair, a quarterback commit in the 2025 class at Ohio State. Like I said earlier, my guest today is Tavian St. Clair from Bell Fountain High School. And uh, I've watched him since his sophomore year. And uh, he's quarterback and, you know, he's committed to Ohio State. Okay. Tavian, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well, I think. Uh, I just wanted to spend about 20 minutes with you, but my podcast isn't quite the same as. 24 7 and all the Ohio State podcasts. But I really like to know is a little bit more as you as a person. We'll talk about recruiting at the end, but uh, as a person, okay, where did, why, when did you fall in love with football? Um, I'd mostly say it was at a young age. Uh, I always grew up watching Buckeye football games. Um, and college football, like we're just a college football family in my house. So um, really I knew like I wanted to play football and wanted to be a part of the sport um, just because of all the things that it, it, you know, gives like and teaches you life lessons and things like that. So be careful because I also heard baseball was your first love. It was. Baseball was my first love. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I do history, man. Yes, <laughs> no, I thought baseball. And then I went down to watch you play. Uh, your sophomore year, and uh, I was really impressed. You guys, you guys won one to nothing. You scored the winning run in the last inning, and I thought that was impressive. And you were a pitcher. Yes, you know, when I watched you, and we're going to go on here, but I think it's one of the first times I realized how competitive you are. You know, you know, really, you did a really good job, and that's when I started telling college coaches. I said, I think this guy can play. And then I saw you as a sophomore, and we'll talk about that later, but you deserve all the credit. Tell me, anybody has anybody been a big push for you or kind of encouraged you, kind of a push you a little bit and said, hey, you know, you got to do this, you got to do that, and you want to keep working at it? Um, yeah, I'd just say it's my parents. Like, they're, they're always there. They know, um, like, that I've had a, a lot of potential. Um, just growing up, you know, throughout the years. And um, so they've always just kind of kept me level-headed and, you know, told me that there are a lot of things out there that I can go get. So that's always been my motivation, just to work harder and, you know, push farther every single day. Didn't your dad play baseball? Yes, sir, he did. Okay, where did he play? Uh, he played at Cleveland State. Okay, Cleveland State. And then you guys are down in Bell Fountain. Okay. Because I thought he had played baseball someplace. I thought your mom was an athlete too, wasn't she? Uh, no, she was not. Okay. I'm wrong on that one then. thought she was. You know, I have posters and, you know, I'm 75 years old and I still have motivational posters up and things like that. Is there, are there any words that you live by? Is there any little cliche or, or things that you've learned that kind of drives you? 
Um, like little sayings or anything like that, or you know, if there yeah, is, I guess, I guess, um, you know, just the just the saying that, like, you know, all you know, all the work that you put in will come to light and, you know, we'll, we'll show eventually. And, you know, you got to work in silence just, uh, you know, it's just a, if you want to be a good athlete, that's just what you have to do. You know, you're not always going to be able to, you know, publicly put stuff out there. You shouldn't want to publicly put stuff out there and you're just going to have to put your head down and work when nobody's watching. Well, you're following Joe Burrow, Burrow's philosophy, much yes, the same. And I was able to see Joe Burrow his junior year, and uh, a lot in common, and, and he and he was also a different kind of leader. But when I saw you play in a game, and, and you, well, you guys lost in the playoffs, so I saw the majority of that game, and there was some frustration because you had a couple drop passes, and you know you got really hammered on the first play of the game. Yes, sir. I was down there. I, I felt bad, but no, and you came back, and it could, took you a, a few plays to get that out of your system a little bit. Yes, but then you guys came back and played well. And I think that's another tribute to you. How do you define leader? How do you define leader, Tavian? Um, I would just say someone who's going to, you know, take control of the people around them through the ups and downs, just no matter what the situation is or, you know, what the outcome might be, they're going to, you know, be the, be the head of the head of the group and lead everybody. It's really good. We're talking about leading, how's school going for you? Very good. Very good it's, school yourself. Well, library's not a foreign country, is it, for you? I'm, that's a joke. <laughs> but, but no, you like, you're doing well in school. Yes, sir. What do you think about once, once you get all your football playing done, yes, sir. whatever that is, what do you think you'll go into? Um, is there something like now? I think really, like, I don't know if I'll be able to get away from sports. Um, I'm kind of, I, I love, you know, basketball, baseball, football. So um, I've thought about being like some sort of athletic director or um, some some place in the athletic department where I can just be around sports all the time. Yeah. Well, if if, if I have my, my wish for you, and, and I'm sure your wish, you'll be playing sports for quite a while. Yes, sir. Well, I hope that's true. And uh, I don't miss very often. Hmm. Uh, okay, you said that. Tell, let's talk about three sports, two sports. Why is it important, do you think, to encourage people to play more than one sport? Um, I mostly just say it's because you can't play one sport all year round, at least in Ohio. So, right. um it just it's just a way for you to stay competitive throughout the entire year um in different ways than just on the football field you know in basketball it's a smaller condensed court that you're playing on with uh less people out there and then in baseball it's more of like a slow moving you know um every pitch counts type of game and you have to learn different competitiveness in, in that sport as well for sure and you have to focus all the time, that's right? That's uh, that's right. Probably, probably more in baseball than any other sport. Yeah, um, yeah. If you if you're being serious, as far as focusing, I think baseball. You know, obviously, when you're hitting and out in the field, you better be focused and stuff like yeah, that. Definitely, but you'll get killed. Okay, what about? I only have one. I ask dumb questions, silly questions. I'll ask you one. All right. Then we'll go to something else. What do you, if you could trade places with somebody for one day, one day, anybody, who would it be? Sports, politics, I hope you don't do that, but anybody one day, who would it be? Um, I'd probably say you. I'd like to see what your job entails <laughs> day in and day out. Well, I've slowed down quite a bit, but I used to do it more seriously. I do it now, but. That's a good, you might do that, but I think you better finish your career first. I yes, <laughs> can't make any money though, because I'm the honest guy. I don't, I don't, I'm not like those guys at 20, and they do a great job 24 7, all those guys, because I really don't care where you go to school. Yes, I really sir. want you to just be you. Yes, okay. Sir. Have there been any, I call it scrapbook moments. 
Okay. Has there ever been any time in your in your well your career, any sport where you you brag about it? And you, when you get together ten years with your buddies now and your brothers and stuff, and you say, "Yeah, I remember that time." What would it be? Do you have a scrapbook time? Um, something just jumps out at you. I mean, I'd just say this playoff run that my uh, my team had just made. Um, it was like pretty historic for our school as far as we had ever gone. And I think that's just something that we're all going to remember forever. So that's something that's a highlight in my, uh, in my high school career. And your buddies will continue to talk about that, won't they? Yes, sir. And when you walk down the streets of Bell Fountain, 10 years from now, they'll say the same thing. Yes, and, sir. and you better be nice to them, man. You better yes, be nice. I'm sure you will. Okay. Let's talk about quarterbacking. I, I you probably don't care, but you have the best – the way I coach quarterbacks, you have the best technique of anybody around in, in nice. right now. Your technique you, – and I studied your film this morning again. You have the best technique. You know, we get – your your coach is – the quarterback coach is the guy you deal with primarily, isn't it? Yes, sir. And uh, so save your money. Save your money because he's done a good job. Thank and, you. Uh, and uh, you know, what do you see your strengths as a quarterback? Um, I mean, I think my my arm is pretty strong. I'd say just the baseball and the pitching side uh, has helped me to have a strong arm in football. Um, but I think my just like keeping the play alive type of mentality that I have is, you know, if the pocket's not, it's kind of messy and not you know, clear, I'll just kind of move my feet and, you know, keep the play alive, as I say, and just keep my eyes downfield and find an open receiver. I think you do a good job extending plays. I think the other thing is, you know, you seem I, – I look for this, it's hard on video, but you seem to understand progression a little bit. Yes, sir. I watch your eyes go across – and then you come back to the middle. If that guy in the – you know, there's – sometimes I, I don't think there's a – Pre, you know, you got to hit this guy. You know, you you see that then when you get to college, it'll be crazy. But college coaches look for that, and That's some of the young quarterbacks can't do that. Let's go back to one other thing you said. You know, I'm a total believer. If Joe Burrow and I told him the same thing, I told you, and in fact, his dad was always reminds me. You've got to have that core strength. You talked That's about. Right. One arm. You kind of you have a baseball arm. Well, yes, you don't throw like a baseball, but you're being a pitcher. And that core, and you even said it. I saw you in an interview, and you talked about back, back strength, your muscles. That's tremendous. Whoever whoever is training you is doing a great job. <laughs> you know, and uh that's so important. The core, the back, because sometimes you should be really tired in your back from throwing yes, so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. I get, you, know, you can tell me the honest answer what time I got here. Plenty of time. Uh, do baseball pitchers really need up in here shoulder strength? Um, I'd say it doesn't need to be like, it needs to be flexible, is what I'd say. It doesn't need to be like, you know, bodybuilder looking weight or strength or muscle size it just needs to be flexible in order for you to you know have full function in your arm you know i may have to hire you as an advisor <laughs> <laughs> no i totally believe that by the way okay what else about quarterbacking with your your you know you if i would suggest you do it, you you move your you keep your feet just the right distance i always like to see that lead foot get a little bit of a jab just like when you're hitting a baseball you know, you yes, get that little, little bit of a jab, and I really like to see that, and you do that. What's the hardest part about playing quarterback? What's um, I'd basically – I mean, it's just the fact that all eyes are on you all the time. You know, you and the head coach, or <laughs> you take all the heat, you know, get all the credit. So it's just an up-and-down position, and you have to stay level-headed. I'd say that's probably the toughest part. Did you were you level headed in the in the playoff team? Be, and Watterson beat you. Were you level headed that game toward? I say, 
I'd say, yeah. I mean, that you, you just have to be. You have to take on that role. And, um, you know, times get tough and you get frustrated a little bit, but you have to remember that your teammates are looking to you to make plays. So, um, you know that when you get back on the field, it's time to go. Tell me one more. Tell me a thing about film study. What – do you believe in it? Do you push it? Do you believe in it for your your teammates and stuff? Film study. Yeah. Um, film plays a lot. Like, it plays a super big role in your development and, you know, just your progression as a team and as a player. Um, because if you don't watch yourself and break down, you know, the things you did right and the things you did wrong, I don't think you can ever really grow and develop like you should. Um and I think that's why all the greats, I mean, they, they study film, you know, hours and hours of film every week. So um, if you want to be the best at what you do, which a lot of people strive to be, you need to watch film. Deshaun Kaiser told me when he went to, he rolled early at Notre Dame, this is a few years ago, and he told me the first two and a half months they never threw a football. He said, he said all they did is study film. Really? Study, study film. He said they didn't throw a football. He said because I, he said quarterbacks had to know what the defensive coordinator was thinking, how to change that, and all those kind of things. And that's right, kind of that's, yeah. it's a true story. Okay, uh, let's tell me. We talked about different things in quarterbacking. I I think you do a really good job. I think you you know if I took my notes here and said. You know, obviously, you can throw long and throw short. I think the one thing you do pretty well is slide and throw, and escape and throw. And, and, you know, you can do those things. And, I mean, you're obviously going to improve that as you keep getting stronger. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let's talk Let's talk about you a little bit more, and then we'll, we'll talk recruiting a little bit. Tell me, what's – what type of energy are you going to bring to Bell Fountain next year? What kind of energy will you – energy is huge. What kind of energy will you bring? Um, I guess my – the energy that I want to bring will be more of like a drive. It will be a, you know, winning mentality that, you know, we've, we've made a run now. We have it kind of under our belt. Um, so now we know what the standard is coming into this year. And, uh, so I think that's just going to be my, my kind of drive is we made it to a certain level. And now we're just got to push past that and take it to, you know, higher heights this year. That's really good. Ohio state's a long ways away. And I know you've made the commitment. I've told you, and I might as well tell you again, I think you're the best Ohio state type quarterback. It's, it's come out of here, Ohio, in a long time. Thank you. I appreciate you know, that. And I'm telling you, it's a little bit different. And you're, you can, well, of course, you can, honestly, you can play any place. I'm talking about playing with Ohio State. They're, they're wanting to throw the ball, throw the ball long, th- you know, scramble and run and stuff. Okay. That, that's a year away. Next summer, I'll bug you about committing to Ohio State, okay? Now, last question to tell you here. What do your teammates say about you behind your back? High school teammates, what do they say? What do you want them to say behind your back? Well, I guess what what I'd like them to say would just be that, you know, if there was anything, like, negative in their eyes, it would be that I push them too hard. You know, that I'm always trying to, you know, I'm always making them do extra reps or making them get it right, things like that, just because – you know, I'm a perfectionist and I feel like, you know, you should want and should strive to be the the best and the greatest player you can be. And you got to reach your full potential. So if there was anything I'd say, I want them to talk badly about me is just that, you know, I almost Which, try too hard. Yeah. yeah, that's really good. And I'll refer to Joe Burrow again. When he came off the field, he, the, they, his team wasn't playing very well and he's screaming and yelling at him. This is high school. But yeah. They knew he, he knew what he was all about, so they all looked right. You know, right. I didn't talk back to him. I remember that exactly. Tavian, thank you so much for being on my show. Okay, I enjoyed it. I learned about you. 
I guess if they want to learn about Ohio State, your commitment, you know, check with the Ohio State guys, okay? You can tell them that. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I appreciate this a lot.